Hi everybody, we just had our opening night of Snow Queen last night and I wanted to give you all a quick tour of the set. So after last year, we had all of the COVID restrictions and this year, there are fewer restrictions. So we had a full house last night uh, and we can actually build a set. Last year, we had to build a really minimal scenery. Uh, we dared not spend too much money on scenery for fear of our shows getting canceled and a few of them nearly did. So this year we went full bore with the scenery. So let me show you some of the features of the set. So this set started by just basically drawing a thumbnail uh, on a piece of paper. And then uh, the, the whole platform situation was fleshed out in a program called SketchUp. Uh, and one thing that's interesting about the set here is that these platforms, I call them Paisley platforms. They look a little bit like Paisleys. They're all very odd shaped. Uh, I really, I have a fantastic technical director, his name is John Merseth, uh, and he had this great idea to just take the files that I sent him from the SketchUp, and he brought them to a business products uh, printer in town who printed the, the shapes out in real scale, in full scale. And so basically what we had were big patterns that we could just cut the uh, shapes out in plywood, frame them up, uh, and then, uh, and then put the whole thing together that way. I thought that was a stroke of genius. Uh, these platforms are covered in painted muslin. We had a lot of painted muslin sitting around from other shows. Some of these were sales for the women of Troy. Muslin is a, is a, a fabric that you use in theater all the time. So we happen to have quite a bit of extra. Uh, we painted it all up. Uh, we painted it white and then we glued it down to our platforms. I very much wanted the platforms to look like snow drifts, like uh, snow is just drifting over little mounds of land. Uh, and so under here, I wanted these pieces of fabric to hang about an inch away from the actual facing of the, of the platform. So to do that, uh, I just put, uh, that's just pipe insulation under there. And it, it's, you know, it's that foam stuff. And, uh, and then it gives it a little bit more depth, you know, and, uh, and it's a soft thing, so if an actor kicks it, it's it's uh, it's going to give a little bit. Uh, since this is a basically a snow-covered set, we wanted it to be to feel soft, and so the uh, the platforming underneath here is covered in homosote, which is a fibrous insulation material. So these platforms don't make a lot of sound. So this material is fiberboard, also uh, called homosote. Uh, and it's uh, how we're kind of creating the land shape. Uh, it just comes in little half inch sheets, uh, four by eight sheets and half inch. Uh, and uh, we are able to sand it away. It's, it's pretty fibrous material. When you sand it, it makes a big giant mess. So you want to always make sure that you've got somebody with a vacuum right behind the person who's sanding it. Um, and, uh, and this is the unsanded stuff right here. So, uh, but it's also nice and quiet. And then we're up here, and again, too, anything that looks white and is snow covered is covered in muslin. Uh, and then there's the bridge. The bridge was just, uh, we painted it with a, 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 we scumbled two colors together. It was a gray and a tan. And then all of these sticks <laughs> were uh, from basically stick piles. And this is, the, this is our fake birch that, uh, that I like doing. Um, the birch, it looks like birch on the front side. This all looks like, uh, from a distance, looks like actual birch wood, but it's not. It's just painted paper and we bend it over a board 
uh, and then you can fill the ends with uh, spray foam and then it from the audience's perspective looks like birch you know it's a it's a really great way to fake it you can even put uh, birch uh, actual birch bark on there to sort of sell it a little bit I'll try to do a whole nother video on how to make those birch logs because uh, I've had people come up and touch them from just five feet away. They thought that they were real until they touched them. So it's a great way to uh, do some faux painting for the stage. Uh, and I'll do, I'll, do another, I'll do another video too on trees for the stage because that, that takes a little bit of time. And here's the back of these trees. We have two different kinds of trees uh, for Snow Queen. Uh, these trees were basically done with, uh, with basically we're dropping down tubes from up in the loft. We've got catwalks there that are static. You can see that they're anchored right up at the top. And we, for each tree, had five, uh, basically they are, uh, they're drainage tile tubes. You can see that they're corrugated on the back. Uh, and uh, we dropped those down twisted those into shape. We made bark with uh, spray foam and then we, we covered them in muslin too. <laughs> this, uh, this whole set was a lot of muslin. I'm telling you what, my, I wore out my fingerprints <laughs> just by smoothing out muslin. Painted muslin is kind of like really, really low grit sandpaper and so uh, my fingertips are still, I can't really feel them there yet. <laughs> One of the things I really wanted to accomplish with the set too was uh, winter texture. Um, in winter time, of course, you do see green. Uh, you see a uh, little evergreen tufts of, of grasses or, or dead grasses that are good winter interest. Uh, some of this grass and some of this foliage is real. Some of it is uh, fake and some of it is camouflage netting. Uh, so one of the ways to create texture that looks wintry uh, is by using camouflage netting. That's what this is. This used to be just all white. Basically what I did is I ordered a big uh, camouflage net for winter. That means it's a big white camouflage net. Like if you wanted to hide a tank in the middle of winter, that's what you would use. Uh, but then I took my spray gun to it and I was able to spray a little bit of a blue. The blue is like what you see when you see snow. You don't usually see snow is just not white. It usually has blue undertones to it. Uh, so I was able to use my spray gun and in the corners and underneath the uh, canopies of snow drifty look, uh, I was able to uh, kind of offset that with, with some blue. Uh, and then that's what's under this bisc, the, the big disc too, the thing we call the button. It's just got uh, the camo netting under there. So that's one texture. You kind of want like, oh, there's leaves under the drifts. So we were able to take sheets of paper, roll them up, and this is like a cardstock, kind of, kind of thick stuff, not too thick, easy to roll. Uh, and uh, we had the students just roll these up. Uh, we cut them into triangles, and uh, I started rolling a few of them, and I was able to give this task to students to just make icicle-looking tubes. Uh, and then they are just stapled, and I can kind of show you here, they are just stapled onto the wall like this. And then to create other green texture under the bridge, there would be no snow uh, look underneath the bridge, so we actually have normal camo netting, which you can kind of spray white to look a little bit frosty. Um, but camouflage netting is great stuff. Uh, it's a great way to kind of mimic uh, a lot of foliage from a distance. I wanted this set to be a mix of things that looked organic and things that looked geometric. So um, to me, since we had circles up in the trees, you know, these are going to be the leaves, kind of the canopy of the leaves. And these, by the way, are inspired by an art installation uh, by the artist Tom Price. Uh, and, uh, and so we took PVC pipe uh, and cut it up into little one inch, one and a half inch thicknesses and then zip tied them all together. And I wanted to carry that motif onto the, the stage too, so that you see that up here there are circles uh, basically offsetting the natural look. Uh, I, I didn't want this set to look full on realistic. I wanted it to have magic and whimsy. Circles kind of play that interesting bubbly role for us. I do get a lot of questions about uh, things like grasses uh, and things that pop up. This is just a, a, a commercially available grass that you, I found at my local hobby store. 
Uh, Hobby Lobby is where I got this. Um, and it's just uh, screwed down to the stage. You can see that it's, I got a single screw right there somewhere. There it is. Single screw right there. Uh, holding the grass down. Uh, hope, hope that didn't get too blurry. Uh, there it is. So this grass just sits in the corners uh, and it's durable stuff. If an actor kicks it, I don't care. It's not going to go anywhere. Uh, and then also you can find little grass tufts like this. I put this stuff all over the place just for accent and the roots of trees. I think it works really nicely. Uh, same deal. It's just screwed to the floor, a single screw. Uh, and, uh, and from the audience, it looks great. Okay, but there also is a, uh, uh, another way to do it. Uh, this is actual Forster grass from the campus. <laughs> Harvested this, uh, had permission to go out and uh, cut some of this stuff down. Uh, and it's, uh, it's uh, dead for the winter, but always creates sort of a nice stalk like this. Uh, we just go and bind it up. Uh, and uh, I basically I just go out with a wrist full of rubber bands uh, and I cut this stuff off with a handful I rubber band it I bring it in and then I put tape around it uh, and then we run a screw with a uh, with a car washer uh, like that and um, and they these just are, are screwed to the back of the set like this and they just create texture too uh, and then these are the other kinds of trees right here. These trees, I'll try and do a whole nother video on these too, uh, but uh, these are very simple trees. We call them sock trees. They are nothing but fabric that go all the way up to it. So if you want to learn more about these sock trees, stay tuned because I'll have a, another video coming out about those trees also. And then there is this unit. It's basically a wall unit that spins. Uh, this is rolled out from the wings over here. Uh, it's just got wheels on it and moves around. Uh, this is the inside of home. Basically it's grandma's cottage. Uh, and again, we're using my favorite birch technique. And this is just matchstick blinds. Uh, the kind of stuff you get at, I don't know, Pier 1 Imports or uh, remember where we got this we've had it kind of in the department for a while but it came brown we painted it sort of tan and white uh, gave it a texture and it just sort of looks nice and of course matchstick blinds are really cool because they almost have a scrim quality if you light the back of them you can see through them if you light the front of them you can uh, and this is a stove that I made uh, for Christmas Carol a number of years ago. This used to be a, a, a lighting instrument <laughs> uh, from the 1950s. Uh, it's a, it's a Lico light. It's uh, made by Lico. Uh, and, uh, and we just made it a stove. We basically just stood it up. And you can find, uh, find this kind of texture at your home store. It has a little door that opens. Uh, and, uh, and basically looks like a stove. And again, has that neat winter whimsy to it. Fits this show nicely. Uh, and a little basket. So here's that same unit. Uh, and uh, this is what the audience sees when we're on the outside of Grandma's Cottage. Uh, winter roses play a big part in the Snow Queen. And so we've got a trellis here of roses and a little window box for them. And this can just come off and, uh, and be replaced by another trellis that doesn't have as many roses on it. Uh, so uh, that's the the wall unit. Again, lots of birch and uh, this is all just wood that we already had pre-stained from when we did uh, Sleepy Hollow. So the uh, thing about theater, of course, is you're using the resources that you have, things that you have in stock. You try to use things again. If you can get more life out of it, you can save a lot of money. I'd like to also give a big shout out to Phil Wells, uh, my scene shop supervisor, who basically is the designer and the builder of this entire wall unit. Awesome job, Phil. And then I guess the last thing to talk about is the floor treatment. I am a big proponent of floor treatments. I feel like you can build the coolest set in the world, but it doesn't look complete until you actually paint the floor. So. So I decided to incorporate a little bit of color uh, into the main acting area so that it, it kind of looks dirty on purpose. Otherwise, if you just have a white, plain old white set, you're going to get a lot of weird footprints and stuff. And already, just after one performance, you know, there's a lot of heel scuff marks on here. 
I just painted this yesterday uh, and already there's a uh, heel scuff marks and things on there uh, but you know I, I did some cross hatching with a dry brush just to kind of give it sort of an icy interesting look and then blue around the periphery again you know just to sort of frame in the floor so all of this uh, gets the blue spray treatment just to make sure that uh, it kind of looks like a, a cohesive whole. Okay, so I teach scenic design and sometimes I'll get students who ask if they can design a set out of Lego. And usually I say no. <laughs> but Caleb Schilling, if you're listening, I challenge you. This is a challenge from me to you. I would love to see a replication of the Snow Queen set done in Lego. I challenge you to do it. Better yet, I dare you. No, I double, no, I triple dog dare Caleb Schilling to do that using Lego. There it is, boom, challenged. And if you guys like this stuff, uh, you wanna see more of this stuff, please take a look around the channel, uh, see if it's something that you might like to subscribe to. Uh, no pressure, but I would love your support. Uh, until the next video, you guys, thanks for watching, bye-bye. Thank you.